Hello everyone and welcome back. Some of you may remember a video I recorded around a month or so ago now telling you why I think you should attend this year's virtual Earl conference or virtual as it was indeed called. And now that we're a month or so down the line I thought it was only fair to follow up with another video to talk about what I learned from this year's talks and give you a few more reasons to book your tickets early for next year's conference. Firstly, for those of you that still don't know what EARL is, it's the Enterprise Applications of the R Language Conference. And it showcases how people use R within their line of work to solve business problems. And each year after the conference, I take a little bit of time out to reflect and think about what I've learned about R, about how people use it, and where the community is going as a whole. And that's what I want to spend the next few minutes talking about. Now, of course, the event itself this year was ever so slightly different to normal. It was virtual. We didn't have the breakouts where you could chat informally to other R users. We didn't have the evening drinks or the events where you could get really deep over a beer or ten. And for those of you that have been to Earl or indeed any conference before, you'll know that it's these conversations where most of the magic happens. But we did still have talks albeit a much more condensed version of the usual in-person program. But for me, that just meant we all got to see the best that Earl could have offered if we'd have met up in person. And there was perhaps even more to learn than normal. So I'd like to take you through some of the learnings that I have, and I've broadly put them into four different categories. Firstly, in tough times, R is still doing plenty of good. There's a couple of talks I want to reference here. Dave Goody from the Department of Education gave what was described as one of the best shiny pitches ever by showcasing the app they built to understand more about school catchments and the demand for places. And having been through the process of school applications around a year ago for my son, I can instantly see how helpful this type of analysis is for local authorities. Of course, I couldn't let the point of doing good in times of crisis go without giving a mention to HMRC and the fantastic work they presented on supporting the self-employed during COVID-19. They had just six weeks as driven by the government to build and launch a solution for the self-employed, made harder by the fact that the team were, of course, all working remotely too. R's ability to handle zip files was particularly useful here as it helped keep the network traffic as low as possible. And of course, the tidyverse was instrumental in cleaning and processing the data. Secondly, you need to get the basics right when building a data team. The opening two talks of the day, the keynote from Anarita Rossino, followed by Dr. Lisa Clark from Virgin, focused on building and motivating analytical teams. And having done this in each of my past three roles, it was refreshing to hear other people operate with a very similar philosophy to mine. And the advice they had for others around encouraging inclusivity, learning and development were really, really powerful. And indeed, it's really important as well to have a bit of fun when we're all at home. And there were some great suggestions of virtual games like Psych and Codenames that you can play with your teams to build a little bit of spirit around these really strange times. The third thing I want to talk about is how models should be tidy. Modeling probably accounts for more than half of what I do in R and the tidyverse for the rest of what I do in R. So it was great to see Max Kuhn from R Studio round off the day with an excellent presentation on tidy models. I have to admit that personally I haven't used them yet, but I really like the idea of bringing in some consistency across all of the R modeling packages and that ease in which you can deal with categorical variables and date variables, which is often a really big bugbear when it comes to data modeling. The tune grid search functions also look particularly helpful, and I can see clear benefits in applying them to some of the econometric models that I build on a semi-regular basis. The final thing I want to touch upon, and it's perhaps something we all know anyway, is that COVID has changed the game for everybody. Okay, so we all knew this anyway, but it kind of gave me some reassurance to hear other people talking about it too. A lot of the models and businesses I work with have changed beyond belief over the past few months. And this means that models that have been working for years have been rendered almost useless. And hearing it from other people like Owen at the Very Group was really reassuring. 
But beyond that, he also made some really important points about upfront honesty when it comes to modeling limitations and the importance of time, taking time to really understand what's going on with your models. So that's kind of a wrap really. Earl is over for another year. From a personal perspective, it was one of the strangest presentation experiences I've ever had. Firstly, because I'd never spoken to 170-ish people at once, yet still felt so alone by doing it from this very office that I'm filming from now. I really hope that next year we'll be able to get together in person and have some of those inspiring conversations that make Earl a highlight of the R year that it really is. But until then, at least we can all be inspired virtually. And indeed, if this or any of my videos have inspired you to improve your R skills or to get started within R, I'd love to hear from you. I offer reasonably priced training courses from beginner to more advanced level within the R environment and can weave in business skills around that as well. As a freelancer, I also do a fair bit of work helping people with their analytics, from customer analytics to email marketing analytics to more complex modeling as well. And if that's something that you feel you need some help with, then do get in touch. You can get in touch with me via email or via any of my socials, all of which will be displayed below, at the end of the video and on my channel page. Really look forward to hearing from you and look forward to seeing you all very soon.